praise the Lord. I'm going to just turn you to our theme gospel, our theme scripture, Luke 4. And if you have your Bibles, we're going to read verses 16 through 21. And if you find it, please stand with me. And we, if, we, if we can read responsibly, reading it beginning at verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on a Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him together. And he, and he began, began to, to say, say unto them, them this, this day is the scripture, scripture fulfilled, fulfilled in, in your, ears. your ears. Precious Father, in Jesus' name, take control. Have your way. Speak through me. Let me be sensitive to the moving and the Holy Spirit's prompting. We honor you. Let the people be glad and encourage the hearts. Let healing flow by your power. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God's healing love at Christmas. You know, Christmas is a time, some people celebrate Christmas in their way. Some really don't fully understand what it means, why we celebrate Christ Christmas. They have all kind of um, little Santas, and all kind of little things that uh, the world have coined or carved over the years that they identify it as Christmas, but we know what it really means. We know what happened at some point in time in history. God came into time by way of a virgin and he had a plan and a purpose for humanity. Humanity was lost, deprived of a savior, and God so loved the world that he sent him, his son, to save and to deliver us from the powers of darkness, translate us into the kingdom of his dear son, of which I am so grateful to be a part of God's kingdom. God's healing love. I remember on occasion we were ministering to someone in the God's healing power. And God was talking to me and he was mentioning the importance of allowing his healing love to minister to the hearts that are broken and oppressed. The Bible in the book of Acts chapter 10 says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. God is someone coined the God of the oppressed. When God sees people oppressed, he's moved with compassion. He want to help them. Oh, it's taken me a while to grasp the kind of love that God has just a little bit because it's vast. But God cares for hurting hearts. He cares when people are being oppressed by Satan 
who has many schemes and plots to put people in bondage and keep them there during their tenure here on earth. He, he is wicked and evil at the core. But God is good. He is good. He is simply good. And I am so glad that he's good. I remember him telling me one time when he asked me to go back and uh, talk to someone that had were angry, was upset with me through some misunderstanding. And I said, God, they don't want to hear me. They don't even want to, I don't know if they'll answer their phone. He said, show them my love. He said, my love is not fickle. My love is not that way. So I saw him beginning to teach me more about how he is. You know how it is. Sometimes you want to let your emotions take control and say, no, I'm not going to. But the Lord was saying, no, 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 I, I, in your position, you can't afford to do that, son. And so I reluctantly called the person. This was years ago. called the person up and flesh was squirming. But I did what God asked me to do over and over and over again. Till the day came that I remember praying for the person. And the person, I always, many times, give them a chance to reciprocate and pray. But the person was praying. And they began to pray and said, God, and I was angry with him. I was upset with him, didn't want to be and do, but he kept on loving me. And I'm thinking, now, Lord. You know she's talking about you. Because in myself, we are human. But God is divine. He can make up the slack. Hallelujah. So God is a God of love. And he has a healing love. And he heals. That love, there's healing in that love. And all he has to do is to minister unto you that love and whatever needs repairing. You can feel the repairing. You can feel the mending of the, the, the spirit of God. God is so awesome. And, and as we started out, there was, a, there was a tree of life. Healing is important. And in the fruit, there was healing. Look in the book of Revelation, we see again the tree of life. And even the Bible said the tree of life had bore 12 kind, 12 manner of fruit. And it was the healing for the nations. God is a healer, saints. God is a healer. I, I'm so glad I don't have to go around with a broken heart for so long. So long as I can open my heart and begin to call upon the Lord um, who is the mender of the broken heart. Um, and I heard one writer say, who forgiveth all of my iniquity, who redeems my life from destruction and forgiveth all of my sins, my iniquities. Um, and he says, and he redeems my life. And he says, he places a song in my heart, even praise unto God. God desires to be praised when he does something for you and I. Therefore, if God has healed you, then God said, I want you to give me the glory that's due my name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's a healer. God began to tell me about the healing love for the brokenhearted. And then I heard him begin to say there's sorrows in the hearts of many of my people. And as he was talking about the sorrows, I, I, I want to take a few scriptures here and, and I'm going to start in Psalms 13. There's a man that was very familiar with sorrows and that man was David. Hallelujah. You know, I had this idea that if I served the Lord, I wouldn't have no problem. You, you, I know you're not like that, but, but I was. I, I, I thought that if I served the Lord, I wouldn't have no problem. But the truth is, when I began to serve the Lord, I really did have some problems. <laughs> but it was 
as my sister said earlier, it was a time of growth. Now, I want you to look at this, what he says in Psalms 13. This is David, beginning at verse 1. How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Why would David say something like that? Forever? See, David was in a little slump. How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy ex be exalted over me? Isn't that interesting? So, God is going to heal some sorrows today. And I know that those that are watching me by way of television, God's going to heal you of some sorrows, some that you've been carrying for a long time. And you did not know that God's eyes was upon you. You didn't know that he knew all of those sorrows, how long you've been carrying them. But God says he's going to heal you of those sorrows. You need to start praising God right now because God is faithful to what he says. So David was oppressed by his enemies. It implies that. And David was praying and it seemed like in spite of his praying, consistently God was not listening to him. I know that don't happen to you, but it happened to a great man of God, David. So long and so much so until David was feeling down and vexed and frustrated. He says, how long will you forget me, O Lord? Forever? Is this thing going on forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Sometimes God don't move certain things that oppress us right away. Uh, but he does require us to be faithful, isn't that right? Not to lose heart, but to keep believing. Hallelujah, because God is faithful. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he heard my cry, inclined his ears. He, he bent his ears when I began to pray. God hears us when we pray, saints. Hallelujah. David, after coming through trial after trial and after the life that he lived and uh, he went through so many things, but it was a teaching, a time of learning. And uh, David ran from, from Saul a long time, and yet uh, 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 he could have felt like, God, where in the world are you? You see what he's plotting and to do. For... But God, at the right time, he had given him a word. He says, I'll make your enemies your footstool. Stay with me. Don't go nowhere. Stay the course. And I'll show you my salvation. And so David stayed the course and through all of the running and the day came when God says, this is the day. Mm. Somebody, look at somebody said, this is the day that God's going to do something different in your life. God told David and he gave him the wisdom and David was a man respecting his leader. Isn't that right? Saul was his leader, but he was backslidden. They tried to get David to curse him and do him in. David said, well, now, I might look stupid, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> say, he's God's anointed. I'm not going to do that. And so David went ahead and David... God put Saul in a deep sleep, such a sleep until he wouldn't wake up. And there he was 
knocked out, probably snoring, and then here came David and just got the sword from him. He's right on out of the cave. And then he went and stood up on the mount. And Saul came to himself, David. Oh, king. <laughs> you know, he said to his armor bearer, this is not good. You're supposed to protect the king. But I got his armor. In other words, in those days, they'd have their head when they couldn't serve their possession. And he stood there, and the first time Saul said, This, you, David, my son, is me king. So he repented that time, but then he didn't mean it. So the time came again. God dealt with him and found himself in a position again. And so finally, David standing on the mount, and he is this you, O king? Or is this you, my son? And David says, is this me, O king? Basically, look down in your skirt there. There's a little cut there. And uh, I could have killed you, but uh, I didn't. And then, so David, Saul said, well, he said, now I know you're going to be king. Now I know because the heart that you have. Say, don't be moved by the oppressor. The Lord is looking at the heart. Saul said, now I know that, that you're qualified to be who God is calling you to be. Not only is Judah the seven the kingdom, but Judah and Israel, the whole of it. I know you're qualified because you could have killed me, but you let me go. I did you wrong, but you let me go. You're qualified. I know you're going to be the kind of king that God needs to serve his people. Somehow God, somehow man looks on the heart, but God looks on the heart. And there's sorrows in the heart, he said. David knew that, God, I got to get these sorrows out of my heart. Now look at Proverbs 15. In Proverbs 15, you see the Bible says, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Brokenheartedness. But the Lord says he heals the broken hearts. <laughs> Glory to God. Then we see in Matthew 24, there, uh, there are sorrows that come about as a result of the end time, the fears. Isn't that right? Matthew 24 talks about there'll be earthquakes in divers places and famines and so on, you know. But the, and he said, but all of these are the beginnings of sorrows. Isn't that right? Yeah. See, there's sorrows that come because of what the things that's going on in the world today. There's some people are afraid because of COVID. They don't know whether or not they're going to make it through or not. But let me say this here. Keep your eyes upon the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. In times of famine, God kept his people. In time of pestilence, God kept his people. And Lord is not, he said, I'm the Lord and I change not. Put your trust in the Lord. Don't put your trust in medicine. Don't put your trust in the vaccine. Got nothing against them. But what I'm saying, make sure that your trust is in the Lord. For well, the Bible says, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. Trust in the Lord. They that trust in the Lord shall not be moved. This is the time when we got to trust in the Lord now. We've got to trust in the Lord. There are more things that are going to happen in our world today. And when your trust is in God, you're going to be all right. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so... Uh, there are things that are happening on our world, but they're in accord with what the Lord said. He 
said, men's heart failing them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. Hear what I'm saying. To put your trust in God. God is the keeper of our lives. It is so important what I'm sharing. And then he says uh, in 1 Timothy 6, the Bible talks about Paul was telling Timothy this. First Timothy, I'm trying to move fast enough to chapter 6. First Timothy 6, he says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain, and it is certain, there's no U-Haul behind our the hers. And we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment or clothing, let us be there with what? Content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare or a trap, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition because for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now the Lord's got the map and the blueprint for us, but we have to follow it. Isn't that right? If we follow it, it's good and safe, but if we don't follow it, so there's dissatisfaction or discontentment at this time for some, and there's some that may be laboring for wealth and riches, but the Bible says for the love of of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they pierce themselves are you hearing me? They erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, Patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee, Paul said to Timothy, I give you charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that you keep this commandment without spot unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which in his time he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate king of kings and lord of lords who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach to who no man has seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting amen somebody give God the praise for his goodness we're going to see him one day the bible says every eye shall see him. 
even they that pierced him. We got to do now our very best to keep focus on God. And if riches increase, he said, don't set your heart on them. Why, Lord? Because they're like birds. They make themselves have wings and they fly right away. That's what the Bible says. Isn't that right? But put Yes. Why am I going this way here? Maybe for TV or something here. So, sorrows can come about. Griefs and vexation comes about. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Ah, glory be to God. God, set your affections, set your mind on things that are above where Christ sits on the throne of the right hand of God. Look at somebody and say, look up and live. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh man, Isaiah. Oh man, Isaiah, he looked way into the future. He said, who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form to come to this. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Now his sorrows had to do with the sin of humanity, the oppression and the state of mortal flesh, acquainted with grief. And he went through sorrows because of sin, because of people's, uh, 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 and there were times when they turned, they, they, he tried to communicate the will and purposes of God and they, they just couldn't grasp it, you know. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He, is despi- he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs. This is what I want you to see. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Uh, Somebody give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With his stripes. We are healed. With his stripes we are healed. He carried our sorrows. I don't have to carry them. You don't have to carry them. He made a way. He healed our sorrows. And then God said to me, some have financial sorrows. Some have financial sorrows oppressed financially. I know what that's like. I remember going through financial sorrows and I remember my mind was vexed. My soul was disturbed because of the lack, financial lack. And I said, God, you call me for time. I wanted to say, can't you provide? But I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Because I understood. But financial oppression was just following me. But I got good news for you. 1987, God broke that financial oppression. (laughs) Hallelujah. 
God broke that financial oppression. From that point on, things began to go differently for me. Oh, I'll tell you prior to that beforehand, and the vexation, I went to the employment office one day. I was, I was mad with the Lord. I was mad because I said, God, I, you called me for time, and now you, I'm suffering like this. I'm doing everything that I think you asked me to do. And so I went to the employment. I said, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to go and get me a job. I tell you what. I said, I, and I, so I go to the employment office, and I go in there and talk to them about a job and so on and looking at what they had available. Then I went to the credit bureau. And I had five judgments. I came out of that place. I was so mad. I was so mad until I started to cry. <laughs> but inside, I was blaming him. And that was when the Lord said, son, if you will pray in the morning in a reasonable time at night, God will bless you. I took him at his word. From that point on, every morning, before I got into anything, I would roll right over on my knees. I wouldn't let phone calls, nothing else move me. And I would stay there until I prayed it through. Sometime two hours, sometime three, whatever it took. From 1987 to that point to now, God said, if you do that, then God start to bless it. He broke the chains. He said, I wanted you to know how demons can hold your life. He broke their power. And I remember in 1988, we got our first home. And then... Uh, I've shared this many times to these that are here, but some haven't heard it. And our car, and the car decided it was going. I said, well, I'm going to see if I can look for me a used car. And the Holy Spirit said, you can have any kind of car you want. You know, coming out of a place with five judgments, and you can never get nothing. You're scared because it's going to be turned down. And just, you know, you apply for something, and you, it's just not going through because of your credit that's what I came out of but you know what when God gave that word that was the end of that Amen. that was the end of that and I heard him say when I, if you put me first I'll not disappoint you sometimes you have to trust him so I was tried I was tried for several years, even such until my, before my parents died. They thought I was off, off period. But thank God, God is faithful. <laughs> Got my home. God began to bless us and so on. My parents came right before my mom died. and She was so thankful. And you see, sometimes... You, if, you, if you hear God, you got to stick with what God tells you until he manifests his word. And, and I remember wanting God so bad. God, but you told me to do this. I mean, why ain't you talking for me? I mean, you know, mm -mm. you tried. But before my mama died, she saw. And I remember, I told this before, she got sick. And, um, down at Chapel Hill, she thought she was going to die. They all did. Dad did. And I couldn't come home. I wanted to, but I couldn't. I didn't have the money. And I hate to tell him again because he was already on my case. So I said, Dad, I can't make it. He said, son, sometimes you're just going to have to drop what you're doing and come home. I didn't know what to say. I was like, God, I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. So God said, call your mother up in Chapel Hill and pray for her. Call down there in Chapel Hill and begin to pray. God healed her on the spot. Yeah. 
But before she was buried, she understood that if God is calling, don't let me get in the way. And my father that thought I was off, he told a good friend of mine before he passed, it was no longer about finances, he said. As far as I'm concerned, my son is a millionaire. This is good for somebody here today. I don't know who you are. But what the Lord wants you to know is that if he gives you to do something, and unmistakably you know it's God, you got to do it. And you may not see no vindication for a while, but you got to know that God spoke to you. When God called Abraham out, his family may not have understood, but God called him out and he blessed him. And God will bless you if he's calling you. Make sure it's God. Now, don't you get some funny idea that you haven't seen somebody else's life and you, you're going to do it. Make sure it's God. Isn't that all right, y'all? <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is faithful. Financial sorrows. Somebody's financial woes are going to end today. God spoke to me in prayer. Hallelujah. It's like God says, you've had enough now. I'm going to change things for you. Who glory. And then God said there was loneliness. God said there's loneliness. Did you know you can be in the midst of a crowd and still lonely? Loneliness because of loss of loved ones. Loneliness because of being rejected all the time. Loneliness because of having no friends. But loneliness. And then finally, I'm bringing this to conclusion. God says he wants to send his healing love to those that are being oppressed otherwise. He said there were those that were being oppressed in the mind. Oppressed in the mind. God want to give peace. And then he said also, and I'm bringing this to conclusion, that there are spirits of trauma that's been oppressing people, even in the emotions. And then some of those spirits have been impress, oppressing people in their physical body, pain, and doctors can't seem to find out what in the world this, pain, this situation was and where this pain coming from. But God said, there are, Spirits of trauma that came in through traumatic experiences. But God is going to heal. God is going to heal. God is a healer, somebody. God is a healer. Hallelujah. God is a healer. I believe God that it should be as he said. God's not a man to lie. He's faithful. If your body is being pained, then you're a good candidate for God to heal you. God is a healer. Oh, he's wonderful. Oh, he's faithful. He's so great. His love is steadfast. Hallelujah, he'll not disappoint. He'll do. And he's ready to cause that healing love to flow. There's healing for the sorrows in the heart. This healing, soothing, mending, healing. There's healing to repair the soul. It is important that we allow him to heal us. Some have been wondering, Lord, what is going on? When is this going to change? Allow then God to heal the soul. Father, I thank you. I give you praise. I honor you now, and I give your name to praise, and not only on TV, but you may be here today, and while we're praying, you may feel God brings something to your heart or mind. Just say, go ahead, Lord, do what you need to do. Remember, he's a healer. Throughout the Holy Scriptures, 
He's been a healer. Even before all of this age of grace that we know now, he was a healer. He healed the widow woman, Elijah. He healed the son that died. He healed the brokenhearted David. When you read Psalms, you see how much David depended on God to heal that broken heart. He's a healer today. And when Jesus came, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, hallelujah, to preach the good news to the poor, but to heal the broken in heart. I don't know about you, but I, I know what it is to have a broken heart. But I know what it is for God to heal it. Any testimony that you hear these saying, this God is a God of love. And he's not a respecter of persons. What he's done for others, he'll do it for you. And I'll tell you something in conclusion, what the Lord made me see is that if you got a need of healing in your body, don't go through trying to qualify. Just don't do it. If you're saved, you're qualified. When God came to us and the blood that was shed, when we in faith believe that Jesus Christ was our substitute, then God saved us. He didn't say, no, no, no. You got to do some real good works to get into my kingdom. He simply saved them. And the Lord one pastor, I shared this again. He was, I was listening to him. He said, uh, he, he began to get seven steps to healing. Seven this, da, 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 da. And he said, the Lord said, just stop disqualifying my people. Just stop it. They don't need to do all this. They need to just believe. And I will heal them. And I want to tell you this today. That I believe he wants me to make this clear. That a lot of people are not being healed in their physical body. Because they feel like they have to qualify. They feel like they haven't been good. They haven't measured up. And so they just, just don't even try to allow God to heal them. Because they feel like this salvation is of works. And so they never get healed. But the Lord wants you to know that you didn't qualify to get saved. You simply believe the gospel. And you will not have to qualify to be healed. But you will have to believe. Isn't that right? Come on, let's give God thanks. Now the Spirit of God will move all throughout this place. And he'll touch any heart and anybody that needs to be healed and I want you to believe with me it's simply faith and Paul said in the book of Romans that it's from faith to faith isn't that right from beginning to end as my wife is coming now we're going to first pray for the TV audience and then we're going to pray for the living word and others join us in prayer now as we pray for the TV audiences you that are watching this by way of television their healings for you as we pray the Holy Spirit is going to minister to you today the love the healing love of God God is real and he's faithful and he loves you very much he cares what has happened to you he knows what happened knows the traumas. He knows how you're being oppressed. God knows. That's what he told Moses. I know their sorrows. But he also told Moses that I've come to heal them. He doesn't change. You by way of television, you're watching me. God's talking to you. There's a man, there's a woman. There's several of you. This message is going to mean something to you. 
you're going to feel the power of Jesus Christ even as this word is going forth bringing a healing in your body somebody's going to be healed in the mind somebody needs peace and you haven't been able to rest and sleep you just it's your mind being oppressed but there's healing for you today As we pray, we just, you can just, as a point of contact, place your hand on the TV and just believe. Father, in Jesus' name, in obedience to your precious Holy Spirit, there is those, Lord God, that right now that are, that are listening to this broadcast and, and your healing love is going to flow unto them even now. I thank you, Holy Father. I thank you. yet you're listening to this broadcast and the Lord says I see you I know what's happening to you and God says if you'll receive now I'll heal you because he, he has compassion for you hallelujah glory 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 I saw a flash of an adult take you back in memory and he's going to heal you for those ch from childhood hurts it was hard for you to believe hard to trust and you just wondered if you would ever get behind get this behind you but today the Lord is saying to you, I love you. And I'm going to heal your spirit. My peace shall come upon you. And it's going to break every yoke that's held you captive. Fear of people. Fear to trust. God is going to heal your emotions. And as he brings things back to your remembrance, God said, forgive. And he's going to take away that pain. And freedom is coming to your soul, your spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, Jesus. You can touch us where no man can touch us. You know our history. And we thank you for this healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There, there's, there's some pastors that the, the Lord spoke to me in. Listening to this broadcast, and, and you've been struggling because you don't have anyone to talk to. And there's some things that's been going on in your life, and, and you feel like there's just, I don't know where to turn. But the Lord says He's going to heal you. He's going to heal you. And even today, as you receive this word, your heart's going to bear witness that you're one. Father, I thank you for these pastors. I ask now, Lord God, that by the grace and power of Jesus Christ, they'll feel the virtue, the life, the power. The Lord God, go as they hear these words. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, God, we give you praise. 